I have done many things. I have uh, delivered flowers dressed as Princess Leia. I tried to, you know, buy some um, sex toys for somebody who wanted, didn't, were too embarrassed to buy them themselves. So I went in and bought them for him. Um, I unwrap sandwiches. I uh, clean up. I pick up kids, um, you know, from school. I do anything that people with money um, have but don't have the time. So they hire me <laughs> that doesn't have money and does have the time. <laughs> So, you need extra cash. Oh my gosh, who doesn't? Oh, you're going to love me for this podcast. Why? Because all these internet companies are expecting the biggest holiday season ever. And a lot of them don't want to go through the hassle, and it is a hassle, of hiring full-time regular employees. And this means for you at home, if you want to try to have an outside job, a gig, a side hustle, freelancing opportunity, and only work when you want to, yes, your time has come to shine. This is it. I'm Kim Commando, and welcome to Commando On Demand. This is a podcast that gives you in-depth insight into the ever-changing world of technology and the impact that it has on our lives. In this podcast, you're going to hear about different ways, legitimate ways to make money that will definitely surprise you. These aren't your average temp jobs where you have to know how to type and use Excel and all that other boring stuff. I'm talking about an exciting new way of doing business and making money. It's all part of something that the economists are calling the gig economy. The gig economy is helping people all around the world find quick, outside-the-box jobs that allow them to set their own hours and truly work for themselves. We're going to cover everything that you need to know about seasonal jobs. We're going to tell you about the best apps that will get you hired. And also, there are some benefits for temp workers. We're also going to talk about how to market yourself and finally you're going to hear about some wild and wacky jobs that you just won't believe are out there. And get this, we're going to interview someone who actually delivered a stuffed antelope head to someone in New York, rush hour traffic. Yes, and she got paid for it. And there's a lot more weird stories where that one came from. So this is going to be a fun, a profitable, a really quick moving podcast. So you might want to take notes because at the end, you're going to know how you can make some quick cash. And by the way, we couldn't do this podcast at all without the super companies that help us out. So let's hear from one of our partners in this podcast before we get started. Hey, welcome back. All right, freelancing, it's been around for decades, but now technology has made it possible to get what's called on-demand gigs at the drop of a hat. It's convenient to just about anyone who needs to get, well, just about anything done. Now, of course, there are always those dangers in hiring some freelancer who's crazy, and there's also dangers in working for someone who you don't know. But both sides are willing to take the risk because it's easy, it's cheap, and you know what? It just actually works. You can blame it on the economy or maybe the growing intolerance to traditional corporate structures, whatever the case. The gig economy is here to stay. People are risking their livelihood, leaving the corporate environment, and then venturing out into this world of possibility. All right, it's not all roses but they are happy just kind of rolling along with the punches. So why did I quit my job? I quit my job because I didn't really love it. For those of you who don't know, I worked at Twitter and uh, ad agencies. I didn't like what I was doing. I felt in a rut. Time was going by so fast and I wasn't doing anything that made a difference. And for some people that doesn't matter, but for me, it really mattered. I have a main job. They pay my nine to five, my bills, my rent. This is more when I decide to go on a trip or go see that new show, have a bit of fun, I guess, my fun money. As a sound engineer, I also struggle to find clients myself, etc. as a freelancer. So I also went to Uber and I also have two other like side gigs where it's a zero hour contract. I'm in a position now where I have the potential to do something I truly love and make money from it and live off that. I'm already 47 and I work for big companies and multinationals and always had to struggle with uh, management. Since January I started my own business and I started out working for uh, Uber because I like to drive. It is so easy to wake up and you love what you're doing and when I'm fully responsible for money that I am earning and everything I do, I'm seeing the results, right? 
Now, just back up just a second. Before you quit your day job and tell everyone, hey, Kim Commando said it's okay, you have to understand what lifestyle you're actually walking into. If you decide to join the gig economy, leave those rose-colored glasses at home because I'll tell you what, getting a career-worthy job is really tough these days. You walk out, it's really hard to get back in. I know some terrific, talented, experienced, qualified people who can't get more than 20 bucks an hour in the current market, whereby five years ago, they were making maybe $30. Some of them can't get a job at all, and I think I might know one reason why. Did you know that business owners like me, we can hire a tech whiz in India for just a fraction of what an American worker would charge? That's right, international freelance websites. Things like Upwork.com, they make it possible. And there are a lot of super smart tech gurus all over the world. So once you leave your job, it really is a whole new ball game. And before you hit the ground running, here's everything you need to know about joining the gig economy. First of all, how does it all work? Anytime you work on a short-term project, a temporary contract, or work as an independent contractor, you're participating in what's called the freelancer economy, the agile workforce, the sharing economy, or the independent workforce. Those are all the buzzwords that, well, people like to use. You have to accept the fact that gigs come and go. Sometimes a gig might last an hour. Sometimes it can last a few days or even weeks. But a gig is just that. It's a gig and then it's over. Living hand to mouth like that can be feast or famine. So as a gig grabber, you need as many irons in the fire out there. If you're willing to work any time, day or night, your chances of getting hired goes up dramatically. Like for example, I was talking to my Uber driver the other day and I said, so do you like driving for Uber? And he says, well, I drive for Uber, I drive for Lyft. I also deliver food for Postmates and DoorDash and also Uber Eats. So here's a guy who has one car and he's got five gigs, so he's always working. Another thing to consider is benefits. I mean, have you checked into the price of health insurance? It's just crazy. Well, in the gig economy, you have to pay for your own. But there is hope on the horizon. At this point, I'd like you to meet Marion McGovern. She's the author of the book, Thriving in the Gig Economy, How to Capitalize and Compete in the New World of Work. It's a pretty great book. If you have some time, you might want to read it. Marion is the founder and CEO of M Squared Consulting. That was one of the first gig economy companies. She works with CEOs through the Alliance for CEOs. Marion has some groundbreaking news, something called portable benefits. Basically, there may soon be a way for giggers and freelancers to get health care. Get this, not paid by you, all paid by the public. There are a lot of eyes on this problem. And there are a lot of very smart people making recommendations around the notion of, okay, what about portable benefits? What about the idea if I work 20 hours for Uber and 10 hours for Lyft and 10 hours for TaskRabbit, that some portion of what I get would pay into some pool for benefits. And based on how much I've worked for them, it could be prorated and I could get some of that. So that's one model of portable benefits. And Senator Mark Warner has just come up with a bill with the idea of let's do a pilot on this, where we put a pot of money to give different, whether it's companies, digital platforms, nonprofits, whoever it is, come up with models of how you could do portable benefits. And then by 2019, have an answer as to what works. And there's more news. Some companies already giving benefits to temporary workers. Certain companies are doing it on their own. Care.com is already providing an option for their caregivers, babysitters, etc., to receive some benefits. And then, of course, there are private company entrepreneurs that are figuring out ways to make this work. There's a very cool company in Southern California called Shift Pixie, which has taken restaurant workers in fast food stores and said, OK, let's put together a situation for you where you can have so many shifts at Denny's and so many shifts at McDonald's, which would make you a full time person and you will become our full-time employee and we will provide you with benefits. So there are people stepping in because, you know, the government isn't necessarily because they see an opportunity to make it work better. And that's another interesting thing about the gig economy. Independent workers get tax breaks if they own a business. If you're a temp worker, you're your own business. So travel, gas, supplies, pencils, computers, work clothes, your home office, those are expenses that might be tax deductible. Well, there's always a lot of caveats, and I'm not a tax expert, but from what I've heard is that you can take them off, a percentage of them, 
So as long as they're used strictly only for your business. You can deduct a lot of your business expenses. You can deduct your travel to a client. So there are many things that add up over time. So it's really important to understand what do I want to be and what then are the rights and other options I have in that status. So there is a huge difference between the gig economy and the sharing economy. Sharing economy, and you might see this written up online, is where you rent your stuff out to other people. So you're not getting income because of your talents per se, you're making money because of all your stuff. So one of my pet peeves is when people talk about the gig economy, they talk about Airbnb. And to me, Airbnb, I recognize it takes work to be a host. You have to change the towels and clean the place. but. I am getting your really cool apartment in Newport Beach because it's got a great view, it has all the bedrooms I need, and it's available when I want to be there. I'm not getting it because you're a great host. So I'm not giving you the work. I am taking a share of your asset. To me, if it's an asset involved, a physical asset, that's a sharing economy business, not a gig economy business. But they are related. They are related. And there's different levels of interaction. If you're not really a people person, or if you're technically challenged, but you love animals, you might choose to be a dog walker rather than a corporate consultant if you catch my draft. I don't really care who delivers my dry cleaning, but I really care who might be building my website. And I want to have a conversation with that person before I say, absolutely, you're the person I want to do your gig. So the gig economy is good for a few things, at least. Let's say a company doesn't have the beans in their budget for a full-time staffer. Or maybe they do have enough beans to hire a qualified temp worker for a few months. In those few months, the temp can launch the project, train the company, keep it going. Easy peasy. The gig economy also speeds things up. Individual giggers can deliver goods and services faster and more efficiently. No more long forms or red tape. It provides an opportunity for people to be creative about how and when they work. Studies show that by the year 2020, which think about it, it's just right around the corner, there's a good chance that nearly half of all of the American workforce will consist of independent contractors. Think about that. Let that sink in for just a moment. Half of the American workforce will be independent contractors in just a year and a half. So if you're stuck without income, or if you're willing to risk long-term job security for more freedom, well, it's time for you to make a change. Set up that foundation. You need to create your own brand. You need to think out of the box and grab yourself a gig. Now, I know that may sound intimidating to a lot of you, but don't let it be that way. Let's start at the basics. Ask yourself some pretty essential questions. What do I like to do? What are you really good at? And what do I want to become good at? When you go out on your own, it really is like having your own business. And so a business needs a brand, it needs a value statement. What do you stand for? You know, whether you're a copy editor and a web developer or, you know, a digital marketing person, what's your special sauce? What do you bring to somebody else? And, you know, part of that is also, how is it that you choose to do business? I mean, do you want to work 80 hours a week for most of the year and then kind of kick off for six months? I mean, how do you want this to all work? So that's also part of your brand. You know, are you a lifestyle company or are you just doing your own full full-time work as an independent. It's important to figure all that out and figure out how you like to work. So how do you like to work? Figure it out, write it down. Set your ideal schedule. Is it Monday, Wednesday, and Friday? Or is it maybe every day during the week, just in the mornings? Or maybe the afternoon so that this way you can exercise in the morning, take care of the grandkids or kids or what have you. How much is it gonna cost you to keep the lights on? You have to set money aside for taxes, of course, and. You have to keep good documentation. All these things are important because as an independent contractor, you will have competition. You see, the face of business is changing. Not only do you have to give it your all, you have to be good at what you do. And coming up in just a few moments, we're gonna talk about some gigs that you really might wanna take a look at. I'm talking about maybe becoming a caregiver or companion, working at Amazon, If you are strong and you like lifting heavy things, well, you know what? There is a gig for that too. If you like to deliver things, you can deliver anything. So stay right where you are. First, we have a quick thank you to one of our sponsors in this podcast.
Okay, welcome back. Are you ready to find a gig? Okay. There are tons of apps just for the gig economy workers, and each one has its own specialty. And that's how the gig economy works, is that you're going to download an app to your smartphone or tablet, and you're going to look at various opportunities, and then you can select which ones that you actually want to do. For example, I have an app on my phone called Field Agent. I really wasn't paying attention that it was running in the background. So here I go into Costco, of course, because I only need three things and I end up with a cart full of things, which is just crazy at Costco. But anyway, suddenly as I'm standing there, it says, hey, Kim, you have a gig. And I'm like, what's the gig? Well, it knew I was at Costco and it wanted me to go take a picture of the dial soap. All right, well, I can do that because I was actually curious how it all works. So I take a picture of the dial soap and at Costco and I send it off and I made $7 for that. Pretty exciting. But it's not just doing gigs like that. For instance, if you love last minute rush hour or same day jobs, Winello is a good bet, especially if you're in between jobs and you don't mind working on demand. Plus you get paid the same day. They claim to have some big brand name clients, so it's definitely worth checking out. And by the way, we're gonna go through all of these different apps. You don't need to worry about writing them down because over at commando.com, we will post a list of all these different apps from this podcast so that you can check it out. All right, next up, we have Amazon Flex. That lets Amazon workers set their own schedule. And plus, I'm telling you, the pay's pretty decent, 18 to $25 an hour. Amazon says they have plenty of work during the holidays. Of course they do. I mean, who doesn't use Amazon during the holiday season? All right, how you feeling? Are you strong? Do you like lifting heavy things? Well, bellhops may be the app for you. Well, you do have to be over 18, professional, and they stress on time. Another good strongman app is Dolly. If you don't mind using a little elbow grease, Dolly has gigs for loading, hauling, and delivering. All right, maybe that's just too strenuous for you. Maybe you want to be a companion. If you're the nurturing, caring type, Care.com offers gigs in child, adult, senior, and pet care. I've used Care.com with my family, and it's really easy to use. But I'll give you a tip. If you are on Care.com, and if you have a license of some sort, put that in your opening paragraph. All right, if food is your thing and you like to deliver, the Caviar app may be just right for you. As long as you have a car, a bike, a truck, a scooter, motorcycle, and you're over 18, you can make up to $25 an hour. DoorDash is another food delivery app, and of course, there's Uber Eats and Postmates. All right, what about this? If you have super nice, expensive designer clothes, whew, you can rent those clothes out with Closet Collective. It sounds like a fun way to make some extra cash and maybe meet some new people. All right, if you're a phenomenal personal assistant, I'm hiring, just kidding. Well, I am, but that's a whole nother story. Check out Fancy Hands. You choose your availability, then you apply and go to work. If you happen to be a top-rate chef and you don't mind going through some rigorous testing first, you might qualify for Feastly. People who want to eat well but would rather eat at home hire chefs on the Feastly app. You can host dinner parties, cook to your heart's delight, and get paid to boot. Fiverr is terrific. I've used this myself many times. It's an easy to use all purpose gig economy app, one of the most populated and trusted apps out there. More than 25 million folks connect through Fiverr. Moonlighting is another all purpose app with a chat feature, so you can chat before you accept the job. Home Away is for those who want to rent their house out and have more control over the guests than, say, Airbnb. Hop Skip Drive is a mom's based rideshare solution for kids. There's Instacart for grocery deliveries. I love Instacart. Do you remember my Costco story? I hadn't been to Costco for three or four months. You know why? Because Costco delivers in my hometown using Instacart. So if you need a thousand rolls of toilet paper, they'll bring it to you. And of course, there's Lyft and Juno and Uber. Those are for people who love to drive and drive well. And for all of you airplane owners out there, yes, Open Airplane lets you rent out your plane to other qualified pilots. It's true. I mean, there are just a ton more. As promised, hit commando.com and you'll find links to these gig economy apps and so many more. So there are some unbelievable jobs that I bet you never knew existed, but they do in droves. Check these out. Deliver a stuffed antelope head. Hmm. Make a bust of Paula Deen made entirely of butter. 
Or how about save three bar stools at a popular bar? You could deliver flowers dressed as Princess Leia. Film a child sports game because, well, the parents can't go. Or how about this one? Help get a drunk friend off the street. Okay, and here's the funny thing. These jobs have been filled by one person. Everything that I just said that you could do, right. Her name is Randy Heimelfarb, and she's actually a very successful video editor. She's interviewed CEOs and celebrities, ranging from Richard Branson to 50 Cent. She slept on the street for Wired.com to report on the first iPhone. She smiled her way through the Department of Homeland Security. She's produced a ton of videos for IBM, AT&T, MTV, Daily Mail, The Wall Street Journal, and so many more. When the Twin Towers fell on 9-11, gosh, she was there filming. Filming is her thing. She likes it. And for the past year, she's been documenting tasks that she took on as a gig grabber, using sites like TaskRabbit and Zarly, and then posting them over on her website, TaskEconomics.com. Her gig economy videos were so funny. I just had to chat with her. So I called her up. And here Randy is. First of all, I want you to tell everybody who you are and what you do. My name is Randy Hemelfarb, and I work in the gig economy. I love your website. You've done some amazing, some wonderful things. Why don't you just spend a few moments and tell us about it? I have done many things. I have uh, delivered flowers dressed as Princess Leia. I tried to, you know, buy some um, sex toys for somebody who wanted to, were too embarrassed to buy them themselves. So I went in and bought them for him. Um, I unwrap sandwiches. I uh, clean up. I pick up kids, um, you know, from school. I do anything that people with money um, have but don't have the time. So they hire me (laughs) that doesn't have money and does have the time. Okay, that is impressive. So did you get your jobs from certain websites or how exactly did that work? From every, yeah, all over the place. So tell me how you got into this. You were working somewhere, and then what? I was working as a video producer and editor uh, for Wired and for Inked Magazine and um, I was doing a bunch of branding stuff. And um, I started, you know, getting extra cash on the side by doing some task rabbits and did a few Uber driving. You know, I deliver food and stuff, the Seamless and Caviar. So, I, you know, I spread myself all out and, and the opportunity. So um, I was doing both of them and so then I just stopped doing one and started doing the other. So you must have some advice with all your experience grabbing gigs. Well, a lot of it's quick, so you got to move fast, you know, if you want it to happen. Um, in responding and what you like. Also that, you know, some jobs when you do them, you don't know what they're going to be like. And they're, you just got to keep yourself open as to um, the possibilities of what can happen with them. That's true. In some cases, you never know who's really hiring you. Yeah, no, no, exactly. You don't, you don't know, um, or who you're going to really meet. You know, luckily, I, I've been very responsible, but I do find the people I'm meeting uh, just incredible. But here's what everybody wants to know. Let's just cut to the chase. The bottom line: Can you actually make a living in the gig economy? I don't know if you can make a living off it by itself, you know? I'm still, I'm still questioning that. Especially with the in health insurance now, I think um, people don't take that into consideration because you really are out on your own. And like when I was biking, it kind of like, I don't have health insurance. Um, so I had to go, I really wanted to get health insurance. It adds a lot. And it does. Now that health insurance is through the roof, it's almost like people are accepting jobs they don't really like just for the insurance. So the jury's still out on whether the gig economy is going to fly. What I find fascinating is the need. I think it's, there's still a need for it. You know, it's been going on for about five years now, and the need hasn't gone away. People still hire people to hang TV sets. There's a human need going on here. People don't want to bother their friends. <laughs> yeah, because their friends are tethered to a computer. You're right. It's a human need, really. Totally. No, exactly. And so a lot of times I think there's opportunity you can put out there too that you see, hey, why don't I, um, you know, pack up your place so you can relax a little bit for the night, you know what I mean, for three hours. So I think there's a lot of that that needs to become more forefront. A lot of these 
I think employees and people like I talk to, they see opportunities there where they can make money. And by putting it out there, I think a lot of the platforms took that away. People don't need a huge service. Sometimes they just need an hour or two of something. Yes, that's perfect when you have an hour or two to spare. Is there anything else that you think our podcast listeners should know? Something really important. Like, I started taking on jobs that I didn't know if I could do them. You know, you don't have to be a professional necessarily. You have skills inside you that you don't know about. I entertained a kid's birthday party with magic. I'm like, whoa, I didn't realize I had this on my sleeve. You know what I mean? Okay, that is so cool. Wow, I wasn't a magician and now I am. You know, like, you know, kids will learn anything on YouTube or anything like in a minute. And um, I definitely um, had the kids laughing and wondering what was going on. Okay, yeah, I bet they were. So bottom line, don't sell yourself short. Be open to learning new things. Hey, maybe if this radio thing doesn't work out, I could be a magician. Yeah, even in looking fields of like farming and stuff, looking fields of weeding, things that you would never think you could do. We're realizing we need people for short periods of time. Hmm, I don't know about that. You know, there are a lot of single people out there and that are alone and that even if you're a businessman traveling, you may want your iPod fixed or something. You know, it's less expensive to call somebody or to get somebody to pick up your iPhone at the hotel, go run and get it fixed, and then bring it back to you. All right, that would be the perfect gig for tech junkies who can fix gadgets on the fly. So many great ideas, Randy. And you're such an upbeat, creative person. How can our podcast listeners find you and see your films and videos? I know they would just love it. I guess my website, thehimmelfarmfilms.com, is pretty much a portal to all that I do. Uh, My video editing, the taskonomics, all the tasks I take on in film. Hey, it's been great, Randy. Thanks for being such a fun guest here on Command On Demand. Uh, Thank you so much, and thank you for reaching out. Enjoy. Bye. Well, as you can probably imagine, the gig economy, it's not all roses. But it is a viable option for some people, and certainly there's a definite need on both sides. So if you think you just might want to try it out, like, you know, just put that toe in the water. Look at working a temp job for the holidays. Get this. 700,000 jobs are expected to be available, according to CBS. That's the most since 2015. UPS is hiring 100,000 of those. And they generally keep about 35% of their temp hires for good. Target is also hiring around 100,000. Macy's, FedEx, Kohl's. The Gap, Dillard's, you name it. J.C. Penney is even offering temp workers an extra dollar an hour and a week of paid time off. That's a pretty good deal in today's job market. Redial is an e-commerce service for stores like DSW, and they're hiring. Michaels, 1-800-Flowers, and of course, I don't even have to mention Amazon. It looks like a worker's market, my friends, at least for the time being. And another thing you need to know, While employers are required to give you acceptable time off for religious observance, they do not have to give you holiday pay if you are an hourly employee. They don't have to pay you premium pay for a holiday. They don't have to give you an additional day if a holiday falls on your day off. If your employer decides to give you any of those things, you know what, say thank you, consider it a bonus. And if you do decide you like working in the gig economy, I want you to be careful out there. You're not legally protected by any company or any app. You have to do your homework. Be sure you keep your common sense and your wits about you. You never know who you're going to meet on these side gigs. Stick with the well-known apps and websites until you fully understand the business. And I'd like to thank Randy Hemelfarb, Marion McGovern, and Depression to Expression for all the great sound bites and input. We can all learn from each other by sharing the knowledge we know. And if you have technology wisdom to share, I'm going to give you a chance to do it over on commando.com. This is still very much a secret, so a little spoiler for you. I'm looking for a few tech experts, users, and fans to join the Kim Commando community in bigger ways than you've ever imagined. So keep listening for these opportunities because our community at commando.com is growing in amazing ways. Like, for example, we have the Ambassador Program. It's a refer a friend program, but refer enough people and you could actually win a two-in-one laptop. Learn more right now by heading over to commando.com slash ambassador. That's commando.com slash ambassador. And be sure to check out all of our other podcasts. 
It's a personal project of mine. I actually want to build a podcast network. And you can see it all happening over at podnet.com. And if you have a podcast and you'd like to join us, let us know. That's podnet.com.